These are five different online resources or websites that you absolutely need for your t-shirt business. Whether you're doing screen printing, heat transfer vinyl, DTF, DTG, sublimation, whatever method of printing it is that you're using, these websites will all be able to help you in one way, shape, or form. Trust me, I wish I had these when I first started. It would have made things like designing a lot easier. So make sure you check out this video all the way through because chances are you're going to want to check these out. Now, before we get started with this video, as always, my name is Mario with Mechel Prints, and on this channel, we cover the t-shirt business and pretty much everything that has to do with it. From tips and tricks and how to be able to get started in the business, on this channel, we cover that and more. We cover entrepreneurship and different ways to make money, and ultimately, how you can quit your job to focus on what you like. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you like this video because I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first website or online resource on this list is going to be color.adobe.com. If you're anything like me, you have no clue how to match colors. When it comes to shirts and shorts, I just literally put on whatever I find. So it's no surprise that whenever it comes to putting together designs, choosing the right color palette isn't my specialty. So in this case, I use Adobe Color. So here you have a few different tools. Primarily the one that I'm going to be talking about is the color wheel. So here you can go ahead and actually choose different colors and Adobe will give you matching or corresponding colors, depending on the color harmony that you choose. So as you can see here, this is one color scheme or a color palette. You can go ahead and change this. Let's go ahead and do the double split complementary. And now if you look at the color wheel, you can see that all the colors spread out. If you move it around, it all evenly moves. So that way you have the same color harmony throughout. Go ahead and change it one more time. Let's check out the shades. And now, as you can see, since we have, since we have blue chosen, we have a few different shades of blue. Let's go to the red, a few different shades of red. Last one, let's go for the complementary. So I guess these are all different colors that complement each other. And we have a range going from green all the way to red and so on. So as you can see, if you suck at matching colors, if you don't know how to match, if you can't match your own clothes, make sure you check out Adobe Color at color.adobe.com. Aside from that, there are a few extra things here. I haven't used them. So they have the extract theme, which here you upload an image and it'll give you all of the different colors that are in that image. Aside from that, you have the extract gradient, which does just that. It extracts different gradients depending on how you set these little markers over here. So if I set this to red, it'll go from green to red to green, which actually this looks, this looks pretty cool. Aside from that, Next to that, you have accessibility tools. Accessibility tools helps you set the layout for your website or whatever it is that you're doing to be able to actually be seen by people that have some sort of visual disability. Next up, we have myfonts.com. Have you ever had a time when a customer tells you, I want this same exact image or I want this same exact font or text, but you don't know how to find it? Well, this website can help you find similar fonts to a sample font. So check this out. So all we have to do here is we either just paste the URL or a link, or we can upload our own image. So first I'm uploading this one right here, and I'm going to highlight the font that I want identified. So here, these are pretty much all the same thing. So let's just go ahead and leave it at the default and have giggles selected. Now identify font. And as you can see up here, we have our sample, which we took from the image and right under it, you have a few different options that are similar or resemble the font that you selected or that you sampled. Now here we put giggles, but here it's actually picking up biggles. So let's go ahead and change it to see which ones would be closer. So far, I think this one might be the closest one. It has a few different changes with the S and the G, but it's not that bad. And I actually like this one right here, the Lumios Brush Regular. This one faintly resembles it. It's a bit cleaner, so I'm, I'm actually liking this one. But it costs $29. So what do we do now? So let's go ahead and look this up. Go ahead and take Lumios Brush Regular. Just go to our best friend Google, paste it, press enter, and let's see what we can find now. So we have here Lumios Brush under Adobe Fonts. And bada beam, bada boom, we found it right here. All we have to do is click on Add Font. Now this is if we're using Photoshop. So if I click on Add Font, it'll automatically add it to my Adobe products. Now some fonts are going to be easier to find than others. So don't be discouraged if you don't find the exact font because chances are you're probably not going to find it, especially if it's a paid one. So you are going to have to settle for something similar for the most part. It's not always the case. The next website or online resource is going to be Google Trends. Now, Google Trends helps us find what's trending. What are people searching for on Google? And it'll give us a few similar suggestions as well. Now, since we're in a t-shirt business, let's just go ahead and choose t-shirts. And we can see what people have been Googling and how often and around what time they've been Googling or what time frame. So by default, it's set to the past day. I like to switch it to the past five years because it gives us more of a backlog of data. And as you can see here, it has a few spikes and a few dips. These spikes are when people are searching for it the most. 
the dips are when people are searching for it the least. So just by looking at this, we can see that peak times are around August, December, June again, December once again, May, June, December. So June and December seem to be when people are searching up t-shirts the most. Now, how can this help us? Well, simple. This can tell us more or less when people are going to start looking for certain types of t-shirts or just t-shirts overall. You know, a lot of the times right before Christmas, people are going to start searching for it and it's going to peak right at Christmas time. So you want to make sure that you get ready beforehand. So let's say right here, it starts to rise for June. For midsummer, it starts to rise around February, February, March. So in between February and March, if you're not selling t-shirts online just yet, or if you're looking to add t-shirts to your store or whatever other product you want to add, you can use data like this to know when to start uploading them to your store. So that way you can have your store ready for peak season. So to get away from t-shirts, let's just go ahead and say, maybe you want to start a boutique that sells swimsuits. So let's go ahead and look up swimsuits. And again, I like to look at the past five years because it gives us a better understanding of the trend and when the spikes are going to be. So here we can see that during October, there's absolutely nothing, but it does start to rise and it peaks right at June between May and June. Then it starts to go back down, it dips. Then around November, December, it once again starts to rise and it peaks again in June. And it's gonna keep doing that throughout the next five years. So this is a perfect indication of when to start setting up your store. So let's say you're selling swimsuits and you're only gonna be doing that seasonal because of course, not many people are gonna be buying it during the fall season or the winter season. So this right here tells you that you can start selling them again or stocking up on them again around October. So that way you can start getting ready for the next few months. Now, this next one is not a website. It is gonna be an online resource and that is Google Lens. Now, Google Lens is an amazing tool that you need to be using right now. So for this, I believe one requirement you need is to have Google Chrome. So you need to be using the Google Chrome browser. So what this does is it does a reverse image search. So instead of going on Google and typing in text-based t-shirt, all you do is you Google an actual image. So let's take, for example, this It's My Birthday shirt that we found on Amazon for $17. All we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to click on search image with Google. Once we do that, we're going to have this little sidebar open up on the right hand side and we can choose here what we want to search for online. And then under it, you can see we're going to have a bunch of different similar results. So we have this one that sells on Amazon, which is the one we just saw. We found that on Etsy now for $12.75. Somebody on Etsy is selling it for $30. And here we have one for $5 from AliExpress. So as you can see, this helps you find a bunch of different similar images. Now, let's say you find an image on Etsy and you want to see if it's copyright protected or if you could find it somewhere else or even if you could find it without a watermark. So you can use Google Lens for this same exact reason. And I know right now people are probably thinking, oh, but you're taking the image from the creators. Uh, no, not, in, not exactly. Because if you find this image in a few different sources, then that means these creators aren't creating it. They're just reselling it. They're taking it from somewhere else and then they're selling it. And let's look at this one right here. So we have this Alien Summer PNG. All right, so let's see if this is the original creator. I cannot own arts. I believe I, I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I did not. But let's go ahead and right click search image with Google. And here we have a few different options. So we have one from FreePick. We have one from Adobe. We have one from Etsy. We have one from Facebook. We have one from eBay. And we have one from Pinterest. We have one from each and every corner of the internet at this point. And we have one from Redbubble. So as you can see, this is the original image. The one on Etsy is, again, a Canatone Arts. Again, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Then we have on Facebook, Alien Vape Shop. And they have that same exact image as their mascot or as their logo. Then we have it on eBay as a sticker being sold by this seller right here, Amora. Running over to Pinterest, it was pinned by K Leber. And on Redbubble, it's being sold by Vector Scout. Now, last but not least, FreePick. It's on FreePick. So you can go ahead and download it if you have a subscription to FreePick. So as you can see, this person right here probably isn't the original creator. They probably got it from FreePick and they're reselling it. Can I guarantee that? No. But there are definitely more sources where you can find the same exact image. So chances are that one of these could be the original creator or maybe none of them could be. Of course, if you do want a PNG and you find the original creator on Etsy, my suggestion is to purchase it directly from them, as long as it's not a copyright image. Now, last but certainly not least, we have Kittle. 
Now, Kittle is a subscription service, so you are going to have to pay for their services, but they do also have a lot of free services as well. I personally do have the pro subscription, so I have access to everything. So for one, you have different templates that you can choose from. And here you can pretty much customize your own designs. So let's say I have an anime shirt that I want to work on and I like this Tokyo shirt right here. All I have to do is click on use this design and it'll take me to the Kittle editor. On here, I can go ahead and make any changes that I need. I can add any elements. I can remove any elements. I can change the text. I can change this to Neko. And amazing prints. So you can change pretty much whatever you need. We can also go ahead and make mockups. So let's say I want to put this into a t-shirt. I can go ahead and take off the background over here, remove that, click on mockup up here. And there we have it. We have it right on the t-shirt and that looks really cool. I might actually end up printing this. I like it. But aside from that, we can also add it to a few different things. You can add it to a wall so you can see what it looks like on there. Maybe you want to draw this on a wall or something. You can add it to a hoodie. You can resize it, do whatever you want, add it to a tote bag, put it on a mug for print on demand, pretty much whatever you need to mock up, you can mock up using Kittle. Another really cool thing that I absolutely love from them is their AI. So they have a few different AI tools. They have one that can remove your backgrounds. They have an image generator. They have a vector generator, which is really cool. An image vectorizer. So you can turn your PNGs or JPEGs into vector. And you even have an AI quote generator. Let's quickly check out the AI generator, the AI image generator. Start creating with Kittle and we can really just do whatever we want. So let's say we want an astronaut, totally misspelled that one. So let's say we want an astronaut in space going through the Milky Way with actual milk and cookies floating around as asteroids. Let's see what it comes up with. But first, let's go ahead and actually take this off. Now, what art style do we want? I want psychedelic. I like trippy stuff. Generate image. Now, after a bit of thinking, this is what it came up with. And this is actually, this is actually really cool. Now, the same way that you have it like this with that trippy art style, you can go ahead and change it. We can make an anime art style. Let's go ahead and generate that and see what it looks like. And with the anime art style, this is what it came up with, which again is pretty cool. It's a bit different, of course, you know, it's AI. There's a few things that are going to be a little wonky, but overall it looks pretty interesting. Now let's do one more dragon and Neko cat fighting Neko cat winning by severe scratches. Let's just see what it comes up with. And this is pretty interesting. It didn't give me a dragon, but it did give me two cats that are fighting. It looks like they're arm wrestling. Huh. All right. I don't know how I feel about this one. I like it. it it's pretty good. It looks pretty good. Is it exactly what I looked for? No. To the dragon. Let's see what that does. All right. Now it made this cat a little bit more dragon-like and this one also a bit more dragon-like. It's got some koi's back here, I think. I don't know. It, it, it's interesting, but again, it's AI. You know that AI can get a little bit wonky, but playing around with it, you can come up with some pretty cool designs. Now, last thing I want to show you on here is the fact that you can export at a pretty high resolution. For the most part, whenever you export any of these images from any other image creator, whether it be AI or somewhere where you can simply purchase images, a lot of the times you're going to be limited to 72 DPI or a resolution of 72. And for printing, especially with DTF prints, that's not necessarily ideal. So the good thing about this is that you can scale it to 300 DPI and whatever you want when it comes to the height and the width. You can set those dimensions based off of your personal preferences or your need. And you can also export to PNG or JPEG, PDF, or even better, SVG. And those were five of the websites that you absolutely need to know about for your t-shirt business or pretty much any business that you're running that has to do with some sort of design. If you want access to any of these websites, just go ahead and check out the description down below. They are all going to be linked down there. Quick disclosure, the Kittle link is going to be an affiliate link. So if you sign up for it, if you actually purchase a subscription, I will be getting a small percentage of that. You don't have to go ahead and use my link if you want to sign up on your own using your own browser or whatever it may be. 
by all means. I have that there because it really does help me out and it helps grow the channel. So with that being said, huge thank you to everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you smash that like button. Also make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Once again, my name is Mario with Nickel Prince. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.